Hi, uh, welcome to this short video. I thought, uh, you know, I'll quickly record some of my thoughts on the current markets. Uh, you know, probably as you are all you know already aware, I've been uh, consistently bullish with Indian markets for many years now. And uh, I think the, the macroeconomy, the socio-political uh, environment that we find ourselves in India uh, favors us uh, to a great deal. And if you combine that with the overall growth prospects, the, the market sentiments, not only in India, but globally, and how India is being perceived across the world, uh, all of that uh, is very positive over the long term in India. But then you need to sort of bake into that the val valuations, the exuberance, uh, the short term momentum that is there. And if I take all of that in uh, into the stride right now, I, I think it's time for us to be a little bit cautious. And, uh, uh, you know, when everyone around you is making easy money, right, when people are just flipping uh, IPOs uh, and, and there is a large amount of fear of missing out, uh, that is not a very good time for uh, you to be, you know, exuberant and throw caution to the wind. And experience has taught me that whenever making money is very easy, it is perhaps, you know, uh, a very good time to take a hard look at reality, what is actually happening around us. And uh, it's always better to be slightly cautious than uh, be reckless. One very important theme that I'm seeing right now, at least over the last one month, is uh, people are running to buy stocks which have not run up. And... In that process, investors are sacrificing the quality of business, you know, growth prospects, valuations, everything, and just running after the hope of mean reversion that, okay, if this stock has not run up and everybody else in that sector has, then it might be that, you know, this is the time for this has come. Usually you will find that uh, the, the worst of the stocks, uh, don't run up in the beginning right so that is something that you need to be very careful about uh, it's very important especially when the markets are good to uh, remain invested in quality businesses you might make slightly lesser returns but when the tide turns and even if that tide turning is for a very short period of time poor quality businesses will find no takers and you will you know, and, and they tend to nosedive and create serious damage to the portfolio. Now, always remember that if you are, if you're, if a stock goes down 50%, right, you need to make a 100% return. You need to, you know, double your money just to, you know, get back even. So very important uh, to not lose money uh, when the going becomes very easy. Always remember, this is, you know, think of cricket, right? Uh, I, I give these sports analogies so that it, uh, it it's very easy for us to correlate and understand, right? So when, you know, as a batsman, when getting runs is very easy, uh, it's, it's very easy to go with the flow and try uh, reckless shots. And that is when, you know, you suddenly uh, get... Uh, caught or you know uh, get run out because for some instance you think that uh, you know the game has become too easy so better to avoid that and be cautious and uh, play the Rahul Dravid kind of innings the other theme that I'm seeing uh, is uh, not not theme uh, but more market chatter is the question around uh, the change of trend from mid cap small caps to large cap so everybody is saying that mid cap small caps have run up a lot so now is the time to move to large caps uh, and so and so forth so uh, i think that is something which uh, we need to be very uh, 
careful about. I, I don't think a business really cares whether it is a large cap, mid cap or a small cap. Ultimately, for a business, what is, what is the real underlying uh, theme? It is the profits, it is the growth, the valuations, the future prospects. Those are the things which really matter, right? It, it is completely immaterial whether a company is a large cap or a small cap. Both can do well. So it's, it, there's no generic themes. Even when uh, overall large caps uh, are not doing well, you will find some good uh, large caps, uh, you know, sort of circumventing that uh, trend and vice versa. I mean, the same for mid caps, small caps, whatever. So don't go by the label or the characterization of those individual you know companies look uh, at look at the business look at what the uh, the future uh, holds for them and then take a call uh, another point i think which is very important uh, is you need to be now uh, slightly careful of ipos and ipos both in the sme market or more in the sme market and now also in the main board i think we are in a state of exuberance uh, all you know social media whatsapp groups etc are replete with messages about uh, you know the the gray market premiums for ipos and uh, investors are just applying for ipo for that uh, for that uh, listing pop and it, it's become a game and whenever this kind of thing happens uh, retail investors are the one uh, who get trapped in this and we need to understand that if you take a long term history, you will find that uh, IPO performance uh, as a whole uh, very rarely beats the market average. So you're not doing anything additionally great by, uh, you know, applying for IPOs. Once in a while, you will find some IPOs where you will make money. But over, uh, you know, by and large, you will see that you have not performed uh, as much. Uh, as well as the market so it's better so the one strategy i personally follow is i don't look at ipos at all uh, i will look at my my uh, you know thumb rule is i will look at a company at least six months uh, post an ipo uh, because i want uh, some kind of uh, actual track record post it coming to the market because what i've seen is a lot of times uh, financial numbers are dressed up uh, for the IPO. So you will see a long term, uh, you know, um, numbers not that great. And suddenly one year before the IPO, uh, numbers become extremely great. And then uh, just immediately after the IPO, you have a lot of problems uh, that uh, surface. But by that time, you know, uh, you are already in a mess. So it's better to evaluate at least when you have a couple of quarters of public market data you know how the stock is behaving you know how the company is behaving uh, and then uh, take a, uh, a call uh, the less said about the SME IPO space now uh, the better I think uh, to my mind it's it's definitely in a bubble kind of territory uh, we're seeing a lot of companies where business models are completely half-baked uh, coming for IPOs and I would not be surprised if there is some kind of intervention from a, at a policy level or from the exchanges uh, to, to prevent some of these kinds of companies where, uh, you know, the business model itself are questionable or business model is not, uh, you know, uh, not that robust coming in or taking money from the uh, public. So I think that's something to be very, very uh, wary of. I'm not suggesting that you completely do away. I never say. You know, you should uh, completely, uh, you know, say yes or no to something. But you need to be very careful when you are doing this. So with all that, uh, you know, I, you might be thinking that uh, Abhishek has become very bearish and he's become very circumstant. So what, what, what can we do now? So first of all, let me be very clear. I'm not expecting the market to crash. I have, uh, you know, absolutely zero forecasting ability. I have no clue what the uh, future, uh, especially the near future holds uh, for us. Uh, so, you know, at times like this, I think uh, the best strategy is to actually uh, do systematic investment. So buy in small increments in the stocks that you already have, uh, spread it out over time, do it mechanically. You know? So something like even you can do something like a weekly SIP on the portfolio stocks 
or a fortnightly SIP. So, you know, just a random thought, like say every Wednesday you decide that every Wednesday I will buy, you know, worth 100 rupees and then you uh, spread it out amongst uh, the stocks that you have. If the 100 rupees that you are wa wanting to put in does not cover all the stocks in your portfolio, just, just do it mechanically, you know, take the top four, top five, the next week or the next fortnight, uh, take the next five and, and so on and so forth. Right. So do it mechanically. Don't overthink it. And uh, these kinds of times when the markets go sideways or markets uh, you know, correct to an extent or even when the markets are in a slightly overvalued uh, status, it's a good option to, you know, sort of build up your portfolio. So the, the best way to put in money right now is to get into uh, good businesses and get into it with a SIP kind of a mode. Uh, also, equally importantly, if you've collected uh, stocks which are of poor quality over the last uh, few months, uh, it will be good if you start pruning them and getting into better quality stocks. Uh, you may not uh, make as much return as your friend uh, on WhatsApp who's bragging, but uh, rest assured that you are not playing this as a one over game. You are playing this as a test match or a test series. You need to last for the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. Uh, and the most important thing in the markets is, uh, you know, sustenance and resilience. If you are able to stick around for the next 20 years, next 30 years, you will for sure make money. So make that, make that your, you know, primary goal. Uh, and with that, I think, uh, you know, very important is what, uh, you know, even in this kind of a market, what, what is it that I like? I, I continue to like, uh, you know, stocks which are in the infrastructure, capital goods, railways, uh, you know, banking and financials. Uh, I like some, uh, some of the pharma stocks, some IT stocks. A uh, lot of these have run up a lot. Uh, valuations are probably rich, uh, maybe uh, slightly overvalued as well. Uh, but in my opinion, these uh, sectors have a definite tailwind, a lot of in investment happening. And these could provide reasonable returns over the next two to three years. Uh, also, India is transitioning uh, to a stronger manufacturing economy. Uh, PLI and a lot of other factors are playing its, uh, you know, their part. And uh, if this theme sort of manufacturing uh, economy starts playing up, you will find that, uh, you know, some of these sectors, some of the stocks within the sectors could have multi-year bull run. So, you know, we could be at the beginning or at the cusp of the run for some of these. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's uh, what I like. So in summary, I would, I would say that keep calm, uh, have a rational mind, uh, avoid a lot of social media chatter. And most importantly, I think it's important to lower your return expectations and uh, for the near term of course and and keep building your portfolio in a sip mode uh, that's that's all i uh, had to share uh, today and uh, thanks thanks for listening